everyone, it's Jama Mommy, and thanks for joining me for this Christmas scrapbook layout. This is part of the Love Your Stash Challenge with the creative design team. All February long, we are going to be diving into our stash. Here's a look at what's coming, and we encourage you to dive into your stash along with us. So today I'm scrapbooking this photo, which is from 2014, and I've been holding on to it because it cracks me up and I just wanted the perfect layout to, for it to go on. I'm using this layout from the November, December 2020 catalog as my inspiration. I thought it was perfect for this photo. I'm using the Jingle Joy collection, which is not that old, but I'm also going to be using some older papers that I'm mixing in as well, such as this Snowflake is from Holly Jolly from last year. Um, there's a couple mix-ins from last year that I will be using. So it's really fun to mix your kits from close to my heart because no matter how old they are, all of the colors are the same. Um, you can mix your kits really easily and um, it works really well. So I'm going to be adding some glacier cardstock and um, wanted to pull out the blue that's in my daughter's sweater there. I thought that the colors in this Jingle Joy collection were just perfect for this photo. And I'm so excited to finally get this photo scrapbooked. I pulled in that craft paper with sort of the word search look behind it because um, I wanted a little bit of golden to bring out the lights in the background of the photo. And so that did the trick there. These trees I just pulled in, I swapped those out for the large polka dots, which um, I wasn't liking so much. And um, that is from an older mix-in pack as well, I believe also from last year, 2019. So here I'm just rearranging all the strips that I had cut so that they are spaced out. Um, so colors are kind of evenly spaced and the black and whites are evenly spaced. And I used all the zip strips from the Holly Jolly collection, or sorry, the Jingle Joy collection. And so I wanted to evenly space those since they are skinnier. So just rearranging all of that. And um, the wider strips, I cut all of them to one and three quarters. You could also get away with one and a half for kind of the same look. And you'll see later I sort of overlap each one so they all end up being a little bit different width anyway. I wanted to rough up the edges of all of the strips. This took a little bit of extra time but I think that it was worth it and I really like how it looks. So I roughed them up with my micro tip scissors and then marked where I wanted to trim it and cut it with this little photo trimmer that's super nice and portable to keep out on my desk. You'll notice that I rough the edges of them with my um, micro tip scissors closed. That is an awesome tip that I learned from Jill Broadbent at Close to My Heart Home Office once. You don't need to actually open up your scissors to ruffle the edges and then it's a little bit easier to handle your scissors. The only thing I noticed is you um, can't really kind of go back and forth on the paper. You can only go one direction. Um, so if you still have an edge distressor in your stash, that would be a good thing to use. I was at a weekend retreat and I didn't bring it with me, unfortunately. So this is what I did, but I would typically use my edge distress distressor if I were going to be doing this. But if you don't have one, this works well. So I'm just going to adhere all of those up and I'm not going to make you watch all that. So with the magic of video, voila, it's all done. So. I am going to glue it onto my background now and as you've seen me do before, I'm gutting out the center of that background cardstock. Um, I think I'm leaving about an inch or an inch and a quarter around the whole thing and that way it gives me the quarter inch border that I want around the whole thing and um, saves me all that paper in the middle that I can use on another project. So it works out very well. So I'm pulling out my Versamat because that helps me line everything up. I can put it right at the quarter inch mark and make sure that it's all lined up perfectly. I love working on this Versamat. 
So then I decided that I needed some splatters like I always do. So I covered up the portions I didn't want black splatters on and just turned my Versamat to get a few of the corners with the black shimmer brush. I like using the black shimmer brush because it is easy to get black splatters and then it leaves a little bit of shimmer on there as well, which you'll see in the close-ups later on how beautiful that looks. It's really hard to appreciate in the video, especially since this lighting is not great and I do apologize for that. I mentioned I was at a weekend retreat, so I brought some of my lighting, but it's not all super portable or um, practical to bring to a, a retreat. So, um, but I got a lot of my projects done for this month at this retreat, and um, I was really happy about that. I used lots of my stash. So let's talk about that photo again, um, because I'm going to be working on the title here in a moment. I asked you guys on Facebook and Instagram for a clever title for this photo because I am not a clever person. Titles are not my forte, but I knew that this deserved a clever title to, um, to go with it. So I was so blown away at the hilarious titles that um, everybody suggested. And I even wrote down all of my favorites and I'm going to show you that paper um, here in a moment when I start working on the title um, that I, I wrote down my favorites and then you'll see what I ended up with. So in the meantime, I'm just adding up and building some layers around the mat and kind of doing them all skewed and um, I wanted all of that color peeking out because there were so many colors in her little sweater and her sweater was striped so I was kind of mimicking those stripes um, which are also in that paper above and I was liking how that was turning out um, for those kind of golden craft papers I wanted them to sort of stick out the top because I was already building out from the sides a lot so I have those kind of sticking out from the bottom and the top so here is that um, paper and I'm freezing it here just for a second so you can see some of those how hilarious are you guys I was so happy to get so many responses and I was just cracking up so um, I'm definitely going to be asking for more title ideas and actually I already have for a potty training <laughs> layout that I'm going to do and I'm excited for that one too so what I ended up using was what the duck and I just think that that is hilarious. And I used the simple serif thin cuts to cut that out of black glitter paper. And I love that these thin cuts also have punctuation. So I've got the question mark and the exclamation point that I can also put at the end of that. Now I'm going to start with the process of embellishing and I like to show you my whole process of embellishing because I... It, it's a, quite a process for me and I like doing a lot of layering and especially with this layout I dug into the um, workshop your way kit that went with Jingle Joy and that's where those glitter snowflakes are from and these little trees are from the sticker sheet for Jingle Joy and so I'm creating a visual triangle here with those bold black embellishments. I wanted to have more black in the layout to really pop. And so that's how uh, what I did with the embellishments and the starting point of my clusters. So pulling out um, little things to layer up with those three main points. Um, I really liked the little star and little snowflake stickers that came on this set and so I was kind of sticking those under things and and layering them around kind of scattering them like you would little embellishments like gem or dot, gems or dots um, within the clusters. I thought I might like that ornament and I didn't but I do like this ho 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 have that kind of coming out. It gets a little lost but it's a nice little um, added touch I think and then I was really liking these candy canes so it took me a little bit to figure out where those get placed and I'm going to fuss with it forever in a day but eventually it gets added down there in the corner after I fuss with that mistletoe a whole bunch to make sure that it's just right 
<laughs> you might notice that as I'm putting the stickers down, I'm not pushing them down real hard. I didn't put any of um, the baby powder or anti-static bag on the back of my stickers to make them not sticky, but I just very, very lightly tacked them down so that they didn't tack down all the way. <clears throat> so at this point, um, I am doing my journaling, and so I cut out little strips and um, then inked around the edges and put them down there on the bottom. And the journaling says, Kaylin's first Santa, in quotes, experience was not all it was quacked up to be. <laughs> and that was another idea that I got from some people when I asked for title ideas. So I incorporated it into my journaling as well. So I'm using some black dots to scatter around and incorporate into these little clusters. I like to put them kind of tucked in with the clusters so they relate with them. These bigger dots are always hard for me. I always feel like they're a little bit too big. So sometimes I tuck them under things. I was thinking I might do that here. And then I thought, no, I need a, one more smaller one. So I pulled out another sheet, used the medium sized dot and liked that there. And then I also ended up adding three gold stars, which are from a really old um, Tis the Season compliments collection. So um, I thought that that went with the gold, kind of um, crafty gold paper in the background and the lights in the background of the photo to tie that all together. So that is the finished layout. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed putting it together. I had so much fun with this and really had fun diving into my stash for all of the projects that I worked on, many of which are going to be coming up very soon. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel and hit that notification bell to be notified when I post a new video. Tomorrow, Erin is going to be posting her Love Your Stash video, so be sure to check that out, as well as the rest of the creative design team, and I will link all of their channels down below. We also hope that you will join us in this challenge. So this week, you are going to use your paper or pocket cards from your stash, and um, when you post something on social media, tag us with hashtag CDT Love Your Stash, because we'd love to see what you create. Have a wonderful day.